Welcome back to my channel. So since my last video about making gunpowder, uh, some crazy things have happened in my area. We have had a snow blizzard in the great state of Texas and some people even got their power knocked out. Luckily for me, uh, our power didn't get knocked out. We did lose water pressure though. And I think this is because the reason why we didn't lose electricity but a lot of people around us did is because our electricity is connected to the fire stations, um, electric grid or whatever. Whereas my neighbors have a, and, um, throughout the rest of my neighborhood have a entirely different grid. Or so that's what I hear. And I, I guess the, the fire department's grid is a little bit more reliable than the other ones. So that was good to hear, but we need a method to make power just in case our power ever does go out. Right, Yoshi? And I'm not sure if you've seen some of my other videos, but you might remember me making a video a while back about how to make a water wheel. And I thought that after everyone had a power outage, might be a good time to finish that. So, ta-da, ain't she a beauty? This is probably the most simple water wheel you'll ever see. I wanted to tell you something. So, to get the belt onto the wheel, at first, if you've seen the first video of my little water wheel prototype, I screwed, I actually screwed the, uh, the spoons onto the wheel and I was expecting to like attach some sort of sprocket to the side and then that was gonna have the belt going over it and then to the motor. So then whenever I was thinking about doing that, I went to the workshop place that I go to sometimes to get parts and stuff to tell them how could I uh, attach the sprocket. They said, well, why would you go through all that hassle? Why don't you just take these pieces of wood and then drill them onto the uh, the back of the wheel or the inside and then drill the spoons to the uh, part that's sticking out that'd be a lot easier than having to go through the hassle of attaching a sprocket to the wheel I was like oh wow that's such a great idea and that's so much simpler I should do that so that's exactly what I did I attached eight spoons to the wheel which will be spinning, which spins the belt, spins the little pulley attached to the motor, and then it will generate power. Now I don't have a battery, but I do have this multimeter that I will be using to measure the voltage, which I have not done yet, by the way. So I'm not sure how much power this bad boy could generate. We're gonna find out. I did put it, um, hook it up to an LED before and it lit, it lit up the LED pretty by, bright. So that was a good sign. It means it was generating electricity. But enough talk. Let's see what kind of voltage this, this water wheel could put out. Stay tuned. I just got finished wheeling the water wheel out to the grass. Now I'm gonna test it. I have the multimeter on. I'm gonna try to film it while it's spinning to see what kind of voltage this is putting out. And just to test it real quick, I'm gonna spin it by hand, see if it's gonna register into the multimeter. And then I have this hose ready to uh, shoot onto the wheels, onto the spoon, should I, as I should say. That would spin the wheel and then hopefully generate a good amount of power. So I'm going to spin it by hand first. Three, two, one. Oh yeah, it's generating all right. Look at that. Okay, now I'm going to get the water from the hose. And I'm going to test it. Before I do this, I wanted to mention that if I really needed to, I could probably uh, find a creek that's flowing and then um, somehow 
like if you've ever seen those primitive technology videos where they take bamboo or whatever tubing and then they feed it from the uh, creek to a water wheel or something water powered that's probably what I would do in the apocalypse rather than using this hose I'm just using the hose for the sake of time so I don't have to worry about feeding a creek flow to the water wheel so yeah just so you know that that's probably what I would do if I didn't have the didn't mean to scare you Yoshi to the uh if I didn't have p hose power or anything like that, that's probably what I would do. I would use a creek. Anyways, enough uh, chitter chatter. I'm gonna get this wheel started and then I'm going to see what kind of power it's putting out. It's gonna be hard doing this while holding my camera. Okay. Try not to get too wet. Hold on. Might need I need might need more power. Yeah, I'm gonna try with more power. Okay, I think that should be good. Let's see how well this does. Here goes nothing. There we go. Look at that. going fast and I'm gonna try to peek over at the power uh, let me see if I can zoom in hang on okay got it going I'm going to try a little more power because I don't think it's going super strong, but I think it's doing good. So it looks like that was like about four to five volts output. I'm going to try one more time with full blast. Okay, here goes nothing. It's going a lot faster now. Oh yeah, it's spinning. And then the output. Looks like it got it up to six something. Six and a half. Which is pretty good. So there you have it. That was my water wheel, me measuring the voltage for the first time. Um, I'm not sure how good of an output that was. The, the highest I saw it got to was uh, 6.53 volts, which I'm not sure if that'd be able to uh, to charge any to charge a battery. I think it might be able to, but I'm not I'm not too familiar with with a lot of electric outputs and that kind of stuff because I'm not an electrician. But it's just something really, that I thought was really cool that I came up with, uh, just in case the apocalypse. It's like a junkyard water wheel. Hope you enjoyed seeing this little project DIY water wheel I came up with. I'm gonna link the, the original video of me with the basic one uh, in the description. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.